Russell Castor and the American extrovert John Cook. The skilled Danish rider Hans Nielsen with Marvin Cox. The great Kenny Carter paired with New Zealand's Larry Ross. Jan Peterson, another Dane, with Alan Graham. And Neil Collins rides with Sean Moran of the United States. As teams, the pairs each have six rides over 21 heats, and the two who aggregate the most points are the winners. Kelvin Statham, there's a lot of people watching our program today, I'm sure, who aren't experts in Speedway. Would you just talk us through the main points about the, this fine machine that you've got to ride tonight? OK, right. Well, it's quite different from a normal motorcycle. It has a 500cc single-cylinder engine. It doesn't run on petrol, it runs on a fuel called methanol. Um, it doesn't have any brakes, which may sound quite frightening to a lot of people, <laughs> but um, that's, that's the way the rules are. It just has a fixed gear, it just has a clutch that disengages and the start, you just drop the clutch and you're away. It's just a fixed gear with chain drive. Um, it doesn't have any speedos, any indicators or anything silly like that. You've got a throttle and a clutch. Um, quite a poor sort of seat, and basically that's it. And what sort of speeds do you reach? Well, here you're talking about 75, 80 miles an hour, and that's quite a small track. A larger track, you're talking 100 miles an hour. And no brakes. No brakes. Kelvin Tatum, in the white helmet, certainly couldn't put on any brakes in the very first heat. A misjudgment that left him on the track, but happily unhurt. We pick up the action now at the start of heat six, with our commentator, Dave Lanning. Heat number six, uh, we have two modern giants of Speedway on the outside grids. In grid three, Hans Nielsen in red and Kenny Carter, England's uh, white hope on the outside. Just looking across the line, inside Roger Johns, local lad coming in as a reserve replacement for Marvin Cox. Next to him, Larry Ross. Then Nielsen in three, outside Carter. The two on the outside, possibly the two to watch, although Roger Johns on the inside has the local crowd behind him. Could be an interesting heat number six. And they're taking a long time to hit the button the way they're going. Carter has made the jump and has cut. Nilsson absolutely took his front wheel off. Ruthless speedway from England's number one. And Nilsson looked pointedly up to the referee because Carter was completely merciless. He leads it. Second place is Ross. In third place, it is Roger Johns. And Nilsson, the world number two, many people's favourite for the individual crown, is a long way back and clearly unhappy with life. There is Carter. <laughs> Carter looking back nonchalantly. But he gave absolutely nothing away up to that first corner. He was on the outside. He carved up Nielsen. I wonder if he lost any spokes from his front wheel because certainly they clashed. Into the last lap with Kenny Carter still leading. His partner Larry Ross is in second place. So this is uh, a useful points accumulation for this pairing from Halifax, of course. Carter wins it, looking for Nielsen. Second place is Ross, third place is Johns. And a long way back is Hans Nielsen. The crowd enjoyed that moment. Well, there is Kenny Carter, who did the hard work very early on in Heat 6. It's going to be interesting seeing that again. Well, let's watch from the outside, and you'll see, just get a glimpse of Carter coming straight across on Nielsen. He made the jump. And uh, well, left the Great Dane nowhere to go but into trouble. Well, Heat 10 has a buzz on the terraces here at Wimbledon because the two unbeaten riders in the card so far, Kenny Carter and Sean Moran, are in contention. And once again, it's the outside grids both have chosen. Looking across the line on the inside in white, Larry Ross. Grid 2 has Neil Collins, no score yet, in yellow and black. Grid three has Carter, and on the outside, Moran. There is Moran in the blue helmet, Carter. Both unbeaten. Something's got to give here in heat 10. And up to the line, it is Carter and Moran, as we expected. And they measure up, and Moran has swung back down the inside of Carter. Brilliant piece of cornering, but Carter aware of that manoeuvre and moves across to cover it. Tremendous piece of action, and Moran swinging right out in the dirt as Carter goes clear. Well, English Speedway fans will be heartened by this brilliant form of Kenny Carter, who's already beaten Hans Nielsen, and uh, he withstood the thrust of Sean Moran. Moran, who was on the outside and swung back down the inside, but Carter, as though he had eyes in the back of his crash helmet, was aware of every tactical move, and is now stretching the little Californian. Well, he's a pugnacious, gritty Yorkshire competitor, Carter, with an appetite for racing, which is heartening to see. 
gives nothing away. And again, he's beaten a world-class opponent here in Heat 10. He wins it. Second place is Moran. Third place is Larry Ross. So that means four points for Carter and his partner, Ross. And Kenny looking back there to Larry Ross and saying, well done, son. But he really was the one who gave us the action in Heat 10. Well, we join in on the first bend, and you can see Sean Moran on the outside, swinging back as Carter leads it. And he goes between the Halifax riders in the most daring fashion. It looked like he had the drop on Carter, but Carter refuses to be budged and opens the throttle and moves away, and that is fearless, determined speedway action. Each of the pairings, bar one, have now completed three rides, and let's have a look at the leaderboard. Clearly in the lead, Jeremy Doncaster, and John Cook on 13 points. Then Kenny Carter and Larry Ross on 12. Sean Moran and his partner Neil Collins have eight as two. So uh, Jan Anderson and Mitch Shearer. Heat number 13 and the pair who are rapidly emerging as the favourites to take this first ever World Games gold medal are here in the red helmet, Jeremy Doncaster. And uh, looking across the line next to him in blue is Jan Pedersen. Now grid three has John Cook, and that is Doncaster's partner. He'll be in white, and he has been most impressive. Two wins in a second, and on the outside, Alan Graham, who's a tiger, in yellow and black. Now, Doncaster and Cook need three points here to take the lead overall in heat 13, and it's Cook that's away. Cook away, Pedersen is second, Doncaster trying to bore a hole down the inside, does so, and Graham coming hard around the outside of Cook, and a battle thoroughly joined here, actually it's shoulder to shoulder, and Cook running, Graham way out wide, but Graham might just have the legs on him, through the speedway, absolutely locked together, Cook on the inside, Graham on the outside, who will give? And Alan Graham is riding right out of his boots here, because he's passed, Cook, and Cook is uh, fighting back, and we have a real piece of speedway action now. Some uh, superb stuff from Alan Graham here. A Midlander with an accent like Jasper Carrot. But he really has sorted out the leading pair into the last lap. The second and third place. Here comes Cook again. And Cook might just have the legs around the outside. Again, Cook switching his attack. Swindon Speedway. Who will level up? They're going to get the wheels in line. And Cook has gone around the outside quite beautifully. Absolutely superb. Graham went through on the outside, Cook battled back, he wins it by, what, two lengths? With a really splendid piece of Speedway action at its very best. That was a good advertisement for the business. Well, let's have a look at heat number 13 again, and watch the tremendous action between John Cook and Alan Graham. Now, it's Cook in the lead here, Graham following around on the outside. Cook takes a look across and sees he really has got a tiger on his tail. Now there's nothing between the pair of them here as they come down the home straight past our commentary position, actually roaring past our camera. Just look at this. And Graham is who pulls clear. But Cook, the rider in the white helmet, is not finished fighting. He tries the outside line, almost overcooks it, loses a foot press there, you can see, looks down. And at this stage, it looks as though Alan Graham has produced a party piece to bring home the three points. He's in front and seems to be losing John Cook. But Cook is pugnacious, and he's a fighter. And as they get into the later stages of the race, Cook produces his piece of overtaking brilliance around the outside. They're absolutely together going into the last two corners. And Cook, riding like a pioneer leg trainer, gets around the outside for as neat a piece of overtaking action as you're likely to see. Some race. Thank you very much. There's a step one up. Alan got just a little in front of me there, and I really had to stick my legs in there and get in there, but bike's going super, and I'm riding well tonight. Did you think you'd catch him when he got in front? I really did, I, I kind of went down and said, shoot, but, you know, I, I kept my head up and kept driving after him, and that, that outside dirt line's still working very well still, so I was very fortunate to be able to get out there and use it. You'll keep it going on what's being a good night for you. Super, Jeremy and myself are really pulling together as a unit, and that's what it takes in team riding, so let's hope we can win that thing. Keep it up, John. Thanks very much, Ethan. Thank you. Race number 14, another of the fighting flamboyant Californians, and there he is, Sean Moran on the inside, beaten only once by Kenny Carter. He's on the inside here. Next to him in blue, Hans Nielsen. Well, a really upside-down night for Hans, who has been 
incomparable in domestic racing. He won his first race, but he's run two last, and that's very unlike him. Grid three has Neil Collins having an unhappy evening. He has three zero returns. And on the outside, in yellow and black, it's Marvin Cox, who has two points from three uh, starts. He number 14, Moran will look for from the inside, and away he goes, and so too is Nielsen, and Nielsen has made the jump, Moran is second, coming hard around the outside is Cox, and that's where the drive is, and Marvin Cox has come around the outside from last to first, and who said Speedway is all about the first out of the traps? It's Cox, and now Moran going after him, and Cox is out wide, and Nielsen's back in third place, and this World Games Speedway event is really beginning to come to the boil. Cox and Moran, Moran will keep digging around the inside. Has he got the line? I think he might just have the drive, but it's Cox who keeps it screwed on around the outside. And we are having splendid speedway. Into the last lap, and Moran has moved through, and Cox has swung back down the inside. They're changing direction, they're switching on a sixpence, but Moran, having been passed, is having none of it, and will anchor Heath number 14. Over the line he goes, three points for him, two for Marvin Cox in third place. It was Hans Nielsen, another piece of excellent speedway excitement in action. Well, all the pairings have had four starts, and it is Jeremy Doncaster and John Cook in the lead on 17 points. Then we have Kenny Carter, who has collected 12 on his own. Larry Ross, only three points, total of 15. Calvin Tatum and uh, Tommy Knudsen have 11 each, as to Jan Anderson and his partner, Mitch Shearer. Then we have Moran, Sean Moran, and Neil Collins on 11 points. Moran's got all of them. Heat 15, there is Calvin Tatum in the white helmet. He'll be on the inside. Next to him, we have Larry Ross in yellow and black. His partner and Kenny Carter, Kenny unbeaten. And if Larry could uh, start to produce some points, they'll be in the running for the gold medal. Grid three, we have Tommy Knudsen, the Danish rider with Coventry with a total of five points. And on the outside, the unbeaten individually, Kenny Carter. Four straight wins. He has been merciless from the outside. He'll swing right across the field if he's got half a length on them. 8.15 and up to the line. It is Carter again. His starting is jet propelled. In second place, it is Tatum. In third, it is Knudsen. But uh, Kenny Carter is leaving those traps like a long dog. Chasing hard after him now is Calvin Tatum, and it's interesting that this pair of Englishmen, in fact, represented the Lions in the World Pairs this year. Now they're in uh, contention, and uh, Tatum is trying the inside run, but I fancy he'll have to produce something very special to catch the flying Kenny Carter. There is Carter, the tyke on a bike. Now what a brother, of course, of road racing 250cc star. That's his younger brother, Alan Carter, who Kenny manages. And Kenny can win it looking back. He really is back at his peak. A rich purple vein of form from Carter. We've seen it here in this World Games tonight. He's going to win Heat 15. Second place is Tatum. In third place, Ross just gets up for the odd point. That could be important to Kenny. So four points to Carter and Ross there, right on the line. And Carter is suddenly aware that his partner has produced a point out of nowhere. Heat 17 and an interesting one in prospect because we have Jeremy Doncaster and John Cook looking for three points which would uh, take them into the lead over Kenny Carter and his partner although they have both yet to meet so it's coming to a super climax here in the World Games at Wimbledon there is Doncaster on the inside with six points to his credit so far Sean Moran in blue one of the individual stars grid three has John Cook and on the outside Yellow Black Neil Collins and up to the start it's the two Americans who show Moran in front Cook is second in third place it is Doncaster and it is the Californians in front and moving into third place it is Neil Collins as they tighten up around the third and fourth corners that's a sensational picture again Still Moran in front, Doncaster's burst into third place. There's a tremendous shot of Cook trying to tiger his way around the outside of his fellow American. Moran leads it. Cook still trying the hard way around the boards. And has he got the drive here? And they're absolutely locked together again. We have action little short of sensational here in the World Games. Into the last lap. 
And Moran and Cook are bringing the crowd to their crowd, their toes as Cook sweeps by. Again, superb overtaking. And who it, will it be who gets the checkered flag? It is Cook by a length. Moran is second, Doncaster is third. And that's a really battling piece of determination and aggressive riding by John Cook has taken him and partner Jeremy Doncaster into the lead. Moran shares a word of congratulations. And, well, you won't see much better racing than that anywhere in the world of Speedway. Well, it all looks, Jeremy, as though it's going to depend on Heat 20. And you've been ticking along, scoring in every ride so far. Yeah, that's right. I've just been hanging in there and scoring a few points because I haven't really been feeling up to a lot of racing hard competition tonight so why is that been, well i've had a knock on the head from the, the weekend from the long track qualifying round and um, i was in two minds whether to ride tonight but i did decide to ride and uh me and john ride very well together anyway and i've just letting john do the work tonight and just filling in for him well i've had five races so far and i've won all five races so i'm feeling pretty confident and uh we just have to see how it goes, you know, I'll give it my best shot, I'm trying 200%, and if I win it, fantastic, if I lose it, well, I've tried my best. Race number 20 of this Speedway World Games, and this one really should sort out the destination of the gold medal, because we have the two leading pairs in contention, we could hardly have scripted it better, Kenny Carter and Larry Ross will be in red and white helmets respectively, there is Carter, who is unbeaten, and we have it in against them jeremy doncaster and john cook and cook has only been beaten by so let's try and spell it out carter and his partner ross must get a maximum first and second to win the gold medal you can see them conferring there building up the tactics if carter wins and ross is third if they get four points in other words to their op opposing riders too then it's a tie and we could have a runoff so Doncaster and Cook, and they are in blue and yellow and black respectively, can afford to let Carter go, providing they block his partner Ross and share the heat. So it's a real cat and mouse game out there. Tactics will tell, you can see that Carter has changed gate to position to allow Ross on the inside. It's going to be the charge of the heavy brigade up to the first corner, because it's all on this one. The gold medal rests on heat 20. Carter and Ross must get the maximum. Doncaster and Cook must split them up. Here we go, heat 20. And up to the line, it is Carter and it is Cook. And Ross has been squeezed out. Carter way out wide. In second place, Cook. In third place, Doncaster. And we thought they might just take the tactical ploy. And Larry Ross has come through. Right onto the back wheel. Ross knows what he must do. He's got to get up here to force a runoff. Carter in front. They're all tightening up. I think Carter may try to slow down the race to give his partner a chance to get back in contention with Doncaster and Cook. And Ross has come through. And now we really have the battle joined because Cook is dropping back to help partner Doncaster. There is Carter in front. The real battle is for the odd point. Remember, Ross must get up into third place to force a runoff. And he has done just that. In fact, he's moved right through on the inside. And he's gone past one. And he's almost gone past two. And Cook is battling back. It is all on this last two corners. What a finish to our speedway discipline in the World Games. Carter wins it. And the, the final call there, Doncaster and Cook just got up to withhold Larry Ross. And that is enough to take the gold medal. Carter in front, you can see the gesture of disappointment. He did his bit. Ross, it has to be said, really bust a gut to try and get up. At one point, he was in second place. But the team understanding and pairing of Doncaster and Cook enough just to squeeze him out to take gold. Well, let's look at the moment when Larry Ross definitely moved up into second place. Carter in front, and Ross seems to have the drop here, and you can see he's in front. Doncaster going after him, and Cook's a long way back on the outside in the yellow and black helmet. Now, Doncaster moves around the outside, and Cook just produces uh, something very special down the kickboard. You can see there's still the fight for second place and third place. Remember, it's vital for Ross to get up if they are to force a runoff. But Doncaster and Cook out high and wide, Carter in front, and a good piece of team riding tactics maintains Doncaster and Cook, and they go on for the gold. 
What a team. And I think Heat 20 showed that it is a pairs event because that was a tactical piece of riding. Definitely so. You know, I, I was out chasing Kenny and I looked and seen Jeremy and he was there. And then all of a sudden Larry was there out of nowhere. And this type of meeting, it's, it's so prestige to win. So we weren't doing dirty tactics, but we did the tactics we had to do to, to bring home the gold. Keeping Larry Ross at bay, that was the job. Yeah, that's right. All of a sudden, Larry sprung from nowhere, so it was a bit wild, but... <laughs> I don't think he'll be too pleased. Well, that's that's the way it goes, I'm afraid. We, yeah, you know, we, we all get the same we, breaks. It's, yeah, you know, that's right. We've been in the same predicament, and, you know, we've been losers before, but we're yeah. winners tonight. Winners indeed. World Games gold for John Cook and Jeremy Doncaster. Silver for the brilliant Kenny Carter and Larry Ross. And in third place, Jan Anderson and... Me. He's already British champion.